I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to our said Eucharist service here at All Saints. Welcome you here in church, and welcome also to those of you who are following wherever you are. So it's a Wednesday morning, it's, at least it's dry, so the green team are beavering away as we worship God. So we are going to worship God, so let's do it in spirit and in truth. The Lord be with you. As we gather together, let's pray together our bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we remember our imperfections in the sight of Almighty God. Let's give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. And now let us confess our sins. In penitence and faith, let us firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's take a moment of silence and then we pray our collect for this day. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love. 
rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first letter, lesson, is a letter. It's the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the church in Colossae and the book Colossians, the first eight verses of chapter one. And Paul begins by greeting the people of the church. I, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, writing to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. And he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many shouting, you are the son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place. And the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other, signs, other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our Holy Gospel reading today, we see the difference between the perfect understanding of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ of his mission and his, his gifts, his powers. There was Jesus, he just had to lay hands on people and they were healed. The evil spirits within people, they knew they'd met their match and they departed. So there we have examples of the, the perfection of Jesus. And by comparison, the imperfect understanding of the people who were following him. They were wanting to see his works and they were wanting to keep him, keep him just for them. And it was Jesus who said, no, I can't just stay with you. I must proclaim the good news. I must share the good news all around. And he did. 
the perfection of the understanding of, of Jesus and the imperfection of the knowledge and understanding of the people. Now, at first glance, that can be a bit depressing for us because we are just like them. We, and I include myself, we're imperfect in our understanding. And sometimes we try to keep things and we realise later that it was for a selfish reason, not a God-given reason. Okay, an anecdote from this morning and then let's find some inspiration from the epistle, the beginning of Paul's letter to the Colossians, for us as imperfect people. An example from me as I came to church this morning of our human imperfection. It's all because of my very sensitive ears actually. There's the beginning of the story. Um, Ella made for me a, a very practical face mask because those with the, like Sue's wearing, like, you know, maybe most of you have got them behind your ears, it creates a sort of, a, it's, a, there's a word for it, eczema. I get eczema behind the ears. And so Ella made one that went with the tapes around the back. And two weeks ago after the Sunday worship, on the way back, uh, it disappeared. And I've been a bit like the widow searching for the widow's mite uh, ever since. You know, turning the house upside down. I've turned the church upside down with poor Denise's help. I've turned the uh, house upside down this morning as I walked to church. There it was on the pavement between the church and the vicarage. Absolutely filthy, but uh, I hope repairable. At least the pattern Ella will be able to follow. I was absolutely overjoyed to find it. And uh, a little few steps further on, I thought, I need to stop and thank God for this. And I stopped and I looked up to heaven and I said, thank you, God. And then I realised, I looked up to heaven, I don't know where God is. I believe he's there. You know, and as a child, we were taught to look up our Father who art in heaven. But now I've flown and I realise that above the clouds there's more and more sky and and then we're told that Richard Branson and Mr. Musk went way up onto the edge of space and the spacemen are up there very high. And I realised just how little I know. And it made me think, here I am, ordained to be a priest of God, and I don't even know where he is. I believe he's there, but I don't know where exactly. And I came to understand the purpose of these two readings and what I was going to say changed totally because I came to understand that it doesn't matter if we don't know precisely where God is if we don't know precisely why we are where we are why things have happened in our lives it doesn't matter if we don't understand precisely what is important is that we trust that what we are doing is the will of God and where we are is by God's will Trust and faith, which helps us to overcome what we don't know. Now, what's that got to do with the uh, letter of St. Paul to the Colossians? Well, those people in the first century, in the years after Christ, would be just like us, human and imperfect. And Paul wrote that every day in his prayers, he gave thanks to God that they understood perfectly the will of God for them. They were human, they were imperfect, and yet in trust and faith, they were perfect in the eyes of Paul. And so there's the challenge for us, to accept our imperfections, but in our imperfections, to strive to serve God, to trust that if we look up, even if God isn't directly above us, he will hear our prayers. He will know our thanksgiving. He will see what we are doing. And he will either say, well done, or he will say, you need to change a bit. Maybe the times when we're like the crowds, wanting Jesus to say, I say no, 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 that's not my will. We are imperfect, but still we can serve. Amen. And now we're going to say our prayers and we will take the laptop on its little walk to the memorial desk for in our prayers we will remember those whose anniversary of death falls at this time.
Let us pray. Dear living Heavenly Father, now we pray for ourselves, for our church and for our world. First we pray for ourselves. We give you thanks that we have a perfect example of how we might live through the example of your Son, our Saviour. And yet we acknowledge that because we are human, we are imperfect and there will be times when we fail you. And so we thank you that we have the example, not just of your Son, but also of people throughout the ages. The ch people of the Church of Colossae, our friends, our families, our parents who have shown us a good way to live. We thank you for their example and we pray that we may follow, that we may do our best, daily giving thanks to you for all that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for our church. We pray for the people of all saints. We pray for those who are still cautious about coming out, who follow our worship, not in church, but from For a moment I speak to the people following from home. My apologies, we had a break in the internet connection. So I'm sorry you missed the uh, prayers of intercession. The peace of the Lord be also always with you, also with you. I share the peace with you and the people of all saints. Let's wave a sign of peace to the people following at home. They, they missed it while we were here. So peace from the people of all saints. And now our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, 
Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. In a moment I will mask and bring the Eucharist in one kind to you in your seats. And for those at home, I commend to you the prayer of the act of spiritual communion. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. God our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this earth holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer that you have on the order of service. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. So, those of you here, thank you for being here. And those of you who are following at home, thank you for staying and apologies for that break during the prayers of intercession. So we'll be worshipping God again on Sunday. The, uh, uh, it'll be a family Eucharist as well, so please spread the word. It's the beginning of a new school year and we will be um, encouraging the family to come together to worship God and we'll be thinking about God's gifts in creation, particularly thinking about uh, our responsibility for the climate as we approach the great conference in Glasgow, thinking about how we as the people of God can play our part in sustaining God's gifts in creation. But that's on Sunday. So until then, if you haven't already sponsored me, please do it. We need a new sheet at the back of church. It's wonderful because so many people have filled in the first sheet. So there's a brand new sheet at the back of church or you can give online. And uh, you know, I'm going through pain, so I'm going to put you through pain for another two and a half weeks reminding you. So please, if you want to, support the church, it's not me, it's the Parish of All Saints that we're uh, supporting through the barbecue, which will be a week on Sunday, and then the marathon the following Sunday. But those are all different things which we can do in our lives. Whatever we're going to be doing, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.